Hi everybody! Today we learn together how to connect Arduino to a Loconet bus. In the previous tutorials of this series, we have seen what are the main elements needed to run a digital layout in DCC standard and how to make them with Arduino. Thanks to a common station, one or more boosters and decoders installed in the locomotives or connected to switches signals, we can operate a simple digital layout. As the complexity and size of the layout increased, it was soon realized that what the DCC standard offered did not cover all the needs. For example, in large-scale models, it is essential to have more throttles placed in different points of the layout or, even better, wireless. Furthermore, for an automatic or semi-automatic management of the layout, a computer, sensors, control panels are required and must continuously exchange information to be all updated on the status of the various elements of the layout. For this reason, some manufacturers have developed their own solutions. This solution complement do not replace the DCC standard. Since their main feature is to guarantee an exchange of information between the connected devices, we often call them networks or buses. Sometimes, as they were originally created to connect throttles to the DCC command station, these solutions are also called throttles networks. The two most popular solutions, at least here in Europe, are Loconet, developed by Digitrax, Expressnet, developed by Lens. Over time, other manufacturers have adopted for their products one of these communication buses, or both. For example, the DigiKeys DR5000 command station supports both. Even the NMRA, the association that gave life to the DCC standard has released its own solution, called Layout Command Control, LCC, but at the moment it does not seem very adopted in commercial stations. Each communication bus has its pros and cons. Normally you decide to adopt the one supported by your command station or by the accessories you own. As you have seen in my previous videos, my command station is a twin center and it supports the Loconet bus. This is the reason why, in this tutorial, we will learn how this bus works and what it is possible to do with Arduino. The Loconet bus was developed by the American company Digitrax. Digitrax has released its technical specification for non commercial use only, Personal Use Edition. Thanks to this specification, we can develop Loconet devices for our layout with Arduino. But what exactly is a Loconet? Loconet is a communication bus that guarantees the possibility of exchanging information between the devices connected to it. As an analogy, we can think of a computer network that allows the computer connected to it to communicate. The Loconet bus is made up of six wires. A six conductor flat cable is normally used for wiring. To connect the devices, you use connectors called RJ12. Some devices have two connectors, so that they can be cascaded. There are also panels, such as the Digitrax UP5, which allow multiple devices to be connected to the Loconet bus. These panels are very useful, for example, to provide more points along the layout to which throttles can be connected. If you have ever attended a Fremo meeting, you will surely have seen that the trains are driven using small handhelds, called FRED, which are connected to the track following the train. Except in special cases, the Loconet bus is always connected to a common station, which acts as a master device. A Loconet command station can have two different connectors, labeled Loconet B and Loconet T. 
The difference is in the signal present on pin 1 and 6 of the connector. A Locknet B bus has, on pin 1 and 6, a copy of the DCC signal that the command station sends to the layout. This signal is useful for connecting additional boosters, hence the name Locknet B. The boosters will in fact be able to take the signal to amplify it without the need to receive the DCC signal in any other way, for example through a connection to the tracks. The Locknet T bus, on the other hand, has a direct voltage of 12 volts on pin 1 and 6. This voltage allows Locknet devices to be powered directly from the bus and is widely used, for example, for throttles, because in this way they do not require any other power connection or the use of a battery to work. The remaining four pins have the same meaning in both buses. Pin 2 and 5 are connected to the ground, while pin 3 and 4 carry data. As we have already learned in these tutorials, every time we want to connect Arduino to a bus, we have to build an interface. Also in this case, I have therefore created a Locknet interface, both as a shield to be installed on an Arduino Uno and as an external board. You can find the files needed to build both versions in the GitHub repository at the link in the description. Let's briefly see how the interface works. We can divide the schematics into two blocks. The red part is for receiving, while the blue part is for transmitting. Let's start with the latter, which is very simple. An NPN transistor is controlled by an Arduino pin, which is connected via a resistor to its base. When the logic level of the pin is high, the transistor conducts and then connects pin 3 and 4 of the Locknet bus to ground. I'm sending a value of 0, or space. If on the other end the logic level of the pin is low, the transistor does not conduct. I'm sending a value of 1, or mark. For signal reception, a comparator is instead used, the integrated circuit LM311. The output of the comparator depends on the voltage present on the plus and minus input pins. The Locknet signal is connected to the plus pin through a resistive divider, which lowers the voltage from 14 volts to about 10 volts. Pin minus is instead fed with a constant voltage of about 3.4 volt and determined by the value of the resistors R1 and R2. When the Locknet bus is at high logic level, the voltage on the plus pin is greater than the referent voltage on the minus pin, and therefore the output has a voltage of 5 volts. Conversely, if the Locknet bus is at the low logic level, the voltage on pin plus is lower than the one on pin minus, and the output has a voltage of 0 volt. The comparator output is also connected to an Arduino pin. In this way, the program running on Arduino is able to read the current value of the Locknet bus. But how can we write an Arduino program that speaks the Locknet language? Fortunately, the same authors of the NMRA DCC library have also developed a Locknet library. We can install this library through the Library Manager. Several examples are provided to help you understand how it works. Let's try to develop a simple sketch that, by reading the status of a button, sends command to the Locknet bus to power up or turn off the layout. The first thing to do is to include the library and initialize it within the setup. If you want, you can indicate in the init method which pins you want to use to transmit. If you do not specify anything, the library will use pin 6. The pin used to receive is fixed and it is pin 8. The method you must use to request the command station 
to change the power state of the layout is a report power, which accepts as a parameter 1 to power the layout or 0 to turn it off. Now insert the piece of code that controls the state of the button, connected to pin 2, and you are ready to test the program. I leave you the full code in the same GitHub repository. I connected the Loconet interface to the Arduino pins 6 and 8 and to the power supply, 5 volts and ground. The button is placed on a breadboard and connected to pin 2 and ground. Finally, the Loconet interface is connected to the Loconet T input of the command station. If I press the button, you see that the command station receives the command and activates the activates the power supply of the layout. Everything works perfectly. To conclude this tutorial, let's also see how to react to commands or data we receive from the Locknet bus. I want to replace the button with a green LED and turn it on only when there is power on the layout. The Locknet library provides callback methods, which it executes when it receives specific information from the bus. We are interested in the notify power method. We implement this method in the sketch, and if state is 1, we turn on the LED. Lastly, in the loop we must call the receive method to allow the library to read the incoming data. And if a valid packet has been received, call the process switch sensor message method to process it. Let's go back to the test circuit. I replace the button with an LED and its resistor. If I now activate the layout using my command station, the LED lights up. In the same way, if I remove the power supply to the layout, the LED will also turn off. In this tutorial, we learn together how it is possible to make Arduino and the digital command station talk via the Locknet bus. This opens up a lot of potential. We will explore in the next tutorials. For now, thanks for watching. If you have any particular questions or requests, leave me a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so not to miss the next videos. Have fun!